before I begin with my presentation, I do have to bring your attention to this forward-looking statement advisory, as this presentation will contain forward-looking statements. A little bit of background on Northern Shield. This picture really represents our space. We like large terrain, applying those new ideas to large terrain with large targets potential. We're known as a generator of high-quality, very early-stage projects using what we call a model-driven approach. And it's that model-driven approach that allowed us to advance the Shot Rock property from an idea uh, to a, a discovery within, within 24 months. And that discovery is providing a, a new and unique opportunity in that it's the very first known occurrence of epithermal gold in the province of Nova Scotia. And that discovery has also provided Northern Shield really as the first mover status on epithermal gold uh, within the developing gold district. So our flagship properties and the focus of this uh, presentation will be Shot Rock in, in Nova Scotia and Root and Settler in Newfoundland. Both provinces are vastly underexplored com compared to other known jurisdictions like Quebec, Ontario, and BC. And the yellow terrain, which is what we call the, the Avalon terrain, is even more underexplored than the rest of the province. In fact, a few years ago, you would have been ridiculed for exploring in, in these terrains, but clearly there's some pretty significant uh, minimal potential within the Avalon of both Nova, Nova Scotia and in Newfoundland. So Northern Shield acquired the right to earn 80% interest in the Shot Rock property in late 2017 from a local prospector. We discovered gold-bearing, low sulfidation epithermal quartz veins and outcrop within the first year. And this was, again, the first known occurrence of epithermal gold within the province. The property is very large at 300 square kilometers located along the Trans-Canada Highway in between the towns of Antigonish and New Glasgow to the west. And I say it's a large property, but the real focus right now will be in the red square in the middle of that slide, and then we're going to focus into the highway zone. So gold has been found at four different fluid cells, or epithermal cells, as we call them, uh, along a three-and-a-half-kilometer strike length. We see two or three other uh, potential cells to the northeast based on alteration geophysics and a little bit of surface geochemistry that could extend it to a total strike length of, of uh, six kilometers. But the real main, uh, the main minimization, all represented by the red and pink squares, is in the middle zone, which actually has the highest surface sample grades of gold. Uh, but the highway zone is the real focus, and we'll move on to the other slides, which is where we've been drilling uh, earlier on this year. But the highway zone has the biggest footprint of all those, of all those fluid cells. Again, you can see on the map the proximity to the Trans-Canada Highway to the south, and there's a railway immediately to the north, and our power line also runs through the property. So year-round access and excellent existing infrastructure. So right now, we're really going to zoom into, uh, into the, uh, the highway zone and take a look at some of the drill results from, uh, from last month. So I say that this was a maiden drill project uh, at Shot Rock, completed in March with, an, with results announced uh, late in April. Four of the eight drill holes intersected anomalous to significant gold values, with the most significant being located in hole number four. At the top of that hole, we hit uh, 40 meters of very low-grade gold, just below 0.1 gram per ton. But then at 130 meters of depth, we hit 3.15 meters of 4.2 grams. And then just below that, we hit 2.5 two meters of 12.6 grams per ton gold. The significance of these is every thermal systems are known for their very rapid transition from low-grade gold at surface above the boiling cap to high-grade within the boiling zone. Our research suggests that that transition may take place around 200 meters depth, but in reality what we're seeing is about 112 meters below surface. So very excited with the high-grade results from the very first drill program at Shot Rock and that we're seeing that high-grade at relatively shallow levels of only 100 meters below, below surface. Other than the high-grade gold intersections represented by, by the uh, red and yellow stars here, other key ingredients that we took away from the drill program was that the drill course shows that the alteration associated with mineralization strongly reduces the magnetic signature of the host rock. And you can see the image on the right, the gabbroke intrusions are, are shown up in the magnetic map as those hot pink colors. But you can see between the gabbro on the, on the top of that image and that running down the middle, circled in a blue outline is an area of lower magnetism. And that, we believe, is created by the alteration and the quartz veining of the epithermal system. That area coincides with five other fault, fault, fault zones labeled there that are parallel to the one insect, intersected in uh, drill hole number four. So again, this will be the focus of the second phase of drilling that will commence shortly. These, these fault systems are parallel the one that was intersected, and they coincide with an area of strong um, magnetic uh, uh, depletion. 
The same thing is shown, perhaps a little bit better on this diagram. Again, the hot pink color is a magnetic inversion model of the Gabbro intrusions. And you can see in the middle there is sort of a V-shaped knot. That's, that's the destruction of the magnetic signature that we believe is created by the epithermal system. And the shape of that, as you can see by the inset on the bottom left, matches the epithermal model very, very well indeed. And drill hole number four was drilled on the very edge on the right-hand side of that V-shaped knot. So what we're keen to do is get back in and drill in the middle portion uh, of that uh, magnetic de depletion area. Move on to that. So in, in summary, we're just about to start uh, uh, the second phase of drilling at Chalk Rock, eight to 10 drill holes, 2,500 to 3,000 meters. And again, that will focus on the areas of uh, strong magnetic depletion that we see on the Airborne Survey. We've also acquired uh, another property about 150 kilometers west of Shock Rock, uh, about 53, kilometers, 53 square kilometers. And although there's not a lot of background data, we do see that it basically has a Shock Rock lookalike to it. So we're keen to get on the ground uh, in that area. And on completion of this drill program, Northern Shield would have met the expenditure requirements to earn its 80% interest in Shot Rock. And this is about 18 months of ahead of schedule. So it's a testament to the excitement uh, that we think Shot Rock uh, is creating. Moving on to root and cellar in, in, in Newfoundland, Northern Shield can earn 100% interest in the root and cellar property. It's located on the Burn Peninsula, a mere three hour drive from St. John's. And as indicated by the right-hand image, the property sits within a very distinct belt that cross-cuts the Burren Peninsula, such as suggesting something geologically unique is occurring in this area. I say the, the property hosts several recently discovered high-grade epithermal gold occurrences, as well as some significant copper mineralization. This is zooming into a little bit more detail on the root and cellar property. It's 35 square kilometers, and it hosts four distinct epithermal gold occurrences over a five-kilometer strike length. Other than the Braxton Bradley, none of these other occurrences have seen any methodical funded exploration, and Braxton Bradley has only seen uh, a drill hole of 50 meters depth in the year 2000, so it's not very well explored either. All these other showings have been discovered by a prospector, and I say has seen no methodical exploration uh, at all. So the main focus was originally the gold occurrences, but there's some very significant, significant copper mineralization there that we believe is of uh, copper porphyry affinity. And that's interesting because copper porphyries and epithermals are really related and end members of the same system. Delving in a little bit deeper, say the drop zone, one of the main occurrences of the property, is characterized by very high silver values, up to 1,400 grams per ton silver, 45 grams per ton gold. And that silver is contained in a mineral called hesite, which is a silver telluride. Now, tellurides are often associated with very large epithermal systems or alkalic-driven systems, such as Cripple Creek in, uh, in Colorado. And of interest, too, is, is uh, the lower image on the bottom left shows another boulder containing hesite, and that's found within a soil anomaly uh, that we identified last year. So that sort of legitimizes the results of the soil sample, and, um, and it, it tells you that the, we believe the soil sample, the soil results are mimicking what's found, found in bedrock. Again, the conquest zone. The conquest zone is remarkable not only for its high grades of gold, 45 or up to 48 grams per ton gold, but for extensive areas of low to moderate grade mineralization. Of particular interest are these mineralized rhyolites containing low to moderate levels of gold. And they look really fresh, much more so than the surrounding rocks, perhaps suggesting that the, the mineralizing vein itself is, is much younger than, uh, than a, I say, a lot of the other host rocks in the area. And again, that's telling us something very different is happening uh, in, the, in the root and cellar area. As I said, there's also significant copper mineralization, as you can see from uh, these, these photographs. 70 samples collected by the prospector, assayed over 0.1% copper, with 12 of them over 1%, and a high of uh, nearly 10% copper. As a copper porphyries and epithermal deposits are, are uh, and members are really the same system. Copper porphyries are typically much deeper. They're sitting on top of the intrusions that would have generated the fluids that created the low solvidation uh, deposits. And so it's, uh, it's somewhat unusual to get them at the, at, the, at the same place unless one of them, in other words, a copper porphyry has been telescoped or moved up in the sea system, perhaps by a fault, and placed side by side to the, uh, to the low solvidation gold occurrences. So one of the big questions at Root and Cellar is, is, is could could root and cellar both host an epithermal gold system and a copper porphyry system? And of course, if there is a legitimate copper porphyry system there, which we believe, then that brings in a whole new players of potential investors and partners. So we've started an extensive soil sample campaign following up the results from last year. 
that white box on the right-hand image uh, is the grid that we're that we're currently surveying with uh, or conducting soil sampling on. The yellow dots, which are a little bit hard to see, are samples that have been collected to date. So we're about one third of the way through that through that soil program. And the idea there will also be some mapping and sampling taking place at the same time, particularly focusing on a, a copper porphyry model as well as the epithermal gold. Uh, then by the end of the summer, we'd like to undertake some more geophysics, likely some airborne MT, gravity, and perhaps some IP, with the idea of getting root and cellar drill ready by the fourth quarter of this year. We do have some other projects. As many of you know, uh, Northern Shield really started its existence as a nickel copper PGE explorer. We still have these projects, so they're currently on the back, board, back burner just because of the remoteness and the high costs associated with exploring for them. But some of them, particularly Edivakes, have spectacular values of PGEs, which is, which is of interest now with the higher palladium values, uh, higher palladium prices. And I say this is a property that has up to 16 uh, grams per ton platinum palladium gold some pretty high values, as you can see from that map, over a seven kilometer strike line. So our real focus right now, although these projects have significant merit, we're still going to focus in on the epithermal gold in Atlantic Canada. And so just to begin to wrap up, why invest in Northern Shield? Well, we have potential district scale tier one assets uh, in the shot rock discovery. We have year round access and ec excellent infrastructure in both the, the root and cellar and its shot rock. And of course, these are very low risk jurisdictions and vastly underexplored, particularly with a COVID uh, pandemic. It's nice to be exploring a little bit closer, closer to home. And the, the drill results from Charlotte Rock certainly provided very positive early stage results. And, and we have two, potentially two pending drill programs at a time when the markets are increasingly looking for uh, attractive discovery, attractive discovery stories. And so, we think that the Northern Shield prevents a unique opportunity to evolve very early on the advancement of a new discovery in a vastly underexplored and exciting gold district. So thank you very much for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions a little bit later.